From the Aishin Broadcast Studio, it's the Executive Spotlight. Welcome to the Auto Success Executive Spotlight. I'm your host, Brian Ankney. Today, my guest is Izzy Alpert from Easy 360. Welcome, Izzy. Nice to be here. Thank you for coming in today. Um, let's let's get started with a little bit about um, photographs of vehicles. I mean, does a good photograph really help you increase the price you can sell a car for and increase your gross profit? You know, this is one of the myths, matrices, because so many people go to the dealer and says, you do this, you sell more car. You do this, you sell more car. And I'm not going to get into it. Mm-hmm. Simply because it, it's for sure attract more attention, but to tie between the quality of the pictures to your bottom line, I don't have the science and I don't believe in any of the science. But I can tell you the cost of a bad picture. Mm-hmm. What's the cost of a bad picture? Make yourself the biggest flag, flagpole. Everybody needs a flagpole. Mm-hmm. How much money a bigger flagpole makes? Nobody knows. Yeah. But imagine yourself if your flagpole is rusty and bended and the flag is torn to pieces. That's what happened to most dealers nowadays. Because here is what's going on. Mm-hmm. People, price is important, okay? But it's not anymore a $1,000 here or there, but $50 a month here or there. Most people, it's $50 a month. Yeah. And car dealers know that. And car dealers are pricing the car using some intelligent process, either V-Auto, AIX, whatsoever. So they give them a range. And we know that they're tier one. If you sell the car in tier one, you make really good profit. Tier two, you still make profit. At tier three, it's iffy. And if it goes to the auction, you've lost money. Yeah. And the decision between tier one, tier two, and tier three is not done manually. So much time to car in inventory, so many people, whatsoever. There is an algorithm. Mm-hmm. In every market, there is also a set of buyers who want to buy this car at most or less the same price. So cars are competing on the buyer attention. The same way a supermodel, when she walks on the, on the walkway, yeah, yeah. she's competing for attention. So if at any given market you have cars that chat, with good pictures, high technology whatsoever, same car near it, okay? So, so, lots, some bush in the background maybe, the sun is, which car will get sold first? Well, the, the attractive one. So it's the cost of not having good pictures that you don't see. Gotcha. This is how much profit we make. Gotcha. I wonder... Every interview I do has a little bit of AI sprinkled into it because it seems like you can't turn on the radio, can't turn on television. Everybody's talking about AI everywhere. Um, AI is going to make a better hamburger. What is it? What has it done for your business? I mean, in your business, how has AI affected your business, and are you using it today? Well, we use AI before anybody call it AI. Really? Because AI is there is no one thing that makes AI, but generally speaking, is computers can do things that human cannot do. Visually or decision making. Because calculation, the digital world cap it, but when it comes to use vision or decision making, that's the new one. So we start with computer vision out to coping about three or four years ago, before anybody called it AI. And it's a very simple thing. If you shoot a car, nobody can get the car in the frame the exact perfect way. Of course, you cannot do it when you have 20 pictures, out, outdoor pictures. So we start with auto cropping. The computer found the car, put the frame around it, and cropped the rest until the, the image is 85% of the screen. Hmm. All images are perfect. Then we went, of course, to the next step, which is BGR, Background Removal and Replacement. Mm-hmm. You take the junk out of the picture because you are not selling bushes or 
old cars or... Or dumpsters. Or right? dumpsters. <laughs> I have seen one with a tow truck. Really? <laughs> that, put, that gives me a lot of faith in a used car, seeing a tow truck. Well, right? no, I mean, <laughs> so BGR comes in and did a lot of work, but what we're doing now, it's kind of a, a, uh, really shocking. I mean, we might send you some example. Okay. You can shoot the car outside, walk around the car outside, and it looks exactly like a photo studio. Because what we do now, AI, is the way next level. You walk around with a video, and if you've seen video, walk around, they're shaky, they're not very interesting. Yeah. But then using the combination of those technology, the corporate comes in and makes sure that every frame is the same. Then the BGR, background removal, take the background, put it on every, put it on this photo studio. Mm-hmm. But the most important, we balance it. So we calculate the center of gravity of the car and move each one of the frame right or left a little bit. And now you have a perfect spin. Oh, wow. And we, the background itself is now 72 different background. Each one looks like a turntable moving around. Oh, wow. So, but one thing that you have to remember, AI cannot improve, improve the original. And this is the thing that people have to remember. You cannot fake it. If you have sun inside the car and it's shady, you have shades here and sun here. Yeah. You cannot fake it if you have reflection into the car. And you cannot fake it if you have snow in the ground, it will be seen in some pictures. Mm-hmm. So AI can do a lot of things, but it's only augmenting either people's skill of good picture. It doesn't make good picture. Gotcha. It makes the mistakes in the pictures goes away. Because it's only about the value of the mistakes. So yeah, we are we are I do not know of any company in this marketplace who started using AI so early or have a product quality of what we call spin smart. You just walk around, the rest is done by the AI. Interesting. But it but it, it but it can't improve what you got. So you, you can't take you can't take a wrecked old Chevette and make it look like a brand new Corvette, is what you're saying. That's a good idea. <laughs> you oh, know, I can do the other way around. You I can, can take a brand, a brand new convert, convert, AI it, it will be sold in the price of uh, Rack Chevy, Chevy. Yeah, but yeah. I don't think the other way around. Yeah. Now, there's other things that we do with the AI. Uh, you know the point of interest, poor POIs, where you see the car and there is a marker here and you click here and you see the, the headlight. Yeah, yeah. Or uh, you see the trunk or... Okay? Most of them are done manually. I don't know if anybody doesn't do it manually, which means you rely on the person to say, I'm shooting the headlight. Okay. But our AI actually find those objects in the image, mark them, cut them, increase it to 4K, and assemble it. So now you walk around one time, you get a perfect spin, in any background you want to, with all the POIs already marked, and when you click on them, you see AI can do that. Interesting. Now, what what about in in, in the studio environment? Um, you know, I, I've I've been hearing a lot about automated studios, where where it's a you know, I guess you drive a car in and you leave and you know does its Not thing. Exactly. Back. Like, tell tell me about that. What does that look like? Okay. So, what can be automated in the photo studio? Yes. You don't automate the drive in and drive out because you would be just got to do it, even if it's Tesla. I don't really want to. Yeah. But what you automate is A, the process of shooting, and the process that takes a lot of time and there is waste of time, it's the uploading and publication. Mm-hmm. So, what is automated in our photo studio from the batch? I'm going to tell you about something new that comes in, which is amazing, is once you drive in and you bring the photo studio, the turntable to here, when you click go, 
the cameras automatically shoot the right numbers of pictures, and they synchronize so you can have one camera does it, and one camera does it, and another camera does video from here. If you want to have the underground of the carriage, it's all, they all work together. And remember, they're smartphones, so they have to talk to each other through Google. Because you cannot make a smartphone shoot. So the automation here is that there is a control center that work with the secure system of Google and send commands to the camera. Then they stop automatically when the time comes and automatically they upload those images to the cloud and then they assemble together to be. So that's the automation. Gosh. Nowadays, we even automate the Terran table. So you click start, the Terran table come to the right position, you drive the car, you click load, you go to the other position, you click start, it does the work, stop. This is the automation. Anything that is mundane or human can make a mistake, it's now done by computers. Side product of it that we can log into it and see what you're doing. So if you need training, we just log in and you see what we're doing. Or if you do something wrong, like the position of the car is wrong, or you leave the door open, we see all of this stuff and we're constantly training client. Interesting. Well, now, we've talked a lot about ways to take good pictures here. What, what about bad pictures? I mean, if, if it's pouring down rain or <laughs> if it's a snowstorm, can, can AI fix that? Can you take pictures in bad weather? The answer is, you can give it up or give up on your clients. Either you give up and say, look, I know that good lighting is only on a um, grayish day or early in the morning and early afternoon where there is nothing on the ground, no rain whatsoever. I shoot only in good environment. Or you can fake it and eventually the clients see it. And you get up and you get off the clients. Yeah. There is no messing with the weather. So you either and need the to weather shoot. is not good. Oh, so you either need to shoot in the right weather outside or inside. And there's that that's the two options. You talk about weather, but the most important aspect of the environment is the sun. Mm-hmm. You cannot possibly get the quality out of shooting outside in the sun, even if you use filters. And what which most people don't use filters. Yeah. The sun, it is a reflect of the car. Inside the car, you will see line of shadow, so you'll see the leather, but you won't be able to see the bottom of the seats. So if you want good quality pictures, you either shoot at certain times, you give up most of the production time, yeah. or you do less than the power, less than good pictures. Then you give up on clients. Gotcha. Presented from the Aishin Broadcast Studio at Babcock's Media. Gotcha. Now, now you, you, you mentioned turntables, um, you know, like, like you know, to spin the car. How much space is, I mean, this, is that something that, that like, how, how much space is required? If you're going to do a, a system like that, an automated system? Okay. Generally speaking, system. generally speaking, there are three reasons to use a turntable, but the most important here is space. Terran table, cut the space side. See, you need to be 17 foot from the center of the vehicle to the camera, more or less depends on the size of the car. Mm -hmm. Cannot be too close, because then you have fisheye effect, or too far away, you just lose. So in most cases, using a Terran table, you just need a corner. Because the Terran table can be only three foot from the corner, Mm -hmm. the camera is here 17 foot. Oh, I you don't it. have to go around because to go around, you need about 35, 40 feet. Oh, so wow. Terran tables save a lot of the space. Well, if we come, if it's just a corner, it doesn't matter. Just give me the corner. they are about 20 foot both sides. But most people nowadays go to dedicated space or covered space or Terran table with curtains around it. So the short answer is you can shoot almost every car in 25 by 28. Really? That's it. You have a Terran table, only three feet from one wall, you still have the right distance. 
However, if you really want to get good production, or if you shoot a lot of big, big trucks, I'm talking about F-350, crew cab, uh, long bed, full bed. Oh, yeah, the long bed. Yeah. The long bed. F-350, crew cab, long bed, that's a big truck. Those are monsters because they're scary to drive them in. So in this one, we say 30 by 30. Give me 30 by 35, then you people will have more space to breathe. Yeah. And that's it. So either just a corner, we call it two-wall studio, in about 20 from both sides. Or dedicated place, best is to go 30 by 30, 30 by 35. But if you're stuck and you have only 25, it's work. So Izzy, you, you know, we started with talking about t- shooting photos outside and, and using your technology to you know, cut out the car and giving a studio quality photo done outside. Then we talk about a studio. And so if the pictures are the same, I mean, are, is the price the same? Or like, wh- why, what... What makes one person choose one and one person choose the other? Okay, so AI is very, very expensive nowadays, but it's just a matter of any other technology. It will go down. So, yeah, going outside and doing this process, our out of pocket, the, the cost of running those massive NVIDIA servers, it's about, end up about two bucks per vehicle. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah, there is a there is a subscription, and between four ninety five, seven ninety five, or nine ninety five depends on how much how many vehicle you shoot. You're covered. Photo studio, it's almost the same price, really, except that there is not the cost of uh, AI, but there is another cost. There is the cost of many cameras, many. Right? So there is no much difference in the subscription. It's a little bit cheaper than a photo studio. Really? So the photo studio costs less than going outside. Yeah, but... But it's not much. But it's not, not much. much. You can burn basically on the same package, cover everything. Well, I mean, if if I had a dealership and I was asking you what I should do, or if you had a dealership and you were making a decision for your own dealership, which way would you go? If your volume is small, let's say under 70, you sell under 70. Yeah. Stick to the manual process, maybe improve, put a shed and whatsoever. Because to shoot 50 or 70, one or two cars a day, you can walk around or find somebody who will walk around and will do it right. Mm-hmm. As soon as you pass the 100 cars a day, a, a month, yeah. a photo studio is a much better way to go. Even though you're investing like to fifty to $70,000 to get it right. But it's the same reason why you do car wash by hand or you buy the car wash tunnel. The car wash tunnel costs much more money than doing it by hand. But at a certain point of time, you have to look at this as a process and as a capital investment. A dealership with a car wash worth more than a dealership that does it by hand. So that's one reason. Look at this. How do you streamline the process and you never have a situation that you have a car with bad picture. Remember the bending, bended flat pole? Yeah, yeah. The other reason that the photo studio worth it is you know unlimited production time and every picture is perfect. You take the sun out, there is tremendous amount of light, like in this studio, but in fact way much more because we need to get the light inside the car. And every car, every picture will always be perfect. It's consistent. And then there is a total cost of ownership. The photo studio can be operated by everybody. The same people who go to the car wash are the same qualification you need to operate a photo studio. Wow. So now it's streamlined. The total cost of operation over the 10 years of usage It's about 60%. No, it's about 70% if you shoot it with your own people. But if you use a third party to come and take pictures, it's about half. Wow. So it doesn't make sense in my mind to spend $100 or $120 to prepare a car for detailing, then pay somebody else 20 bucks to kill it, to shoot it outside. Yeah. 
So you, you mentioned you mentioned that the, the qualifications are the same as the guy that washes the car. So just so I have this straight, what what you're saying is is because I, I detailed cars in high school. So I, I would I would drive the car through the wash, vacuum the car, wipe the dash, you know, do the windows, do all that stuff. And now the next step in my process is pull into the studio, push a button, and it's just it's just one more step. So the same guy that washes the car is the same guy that... A the car doesn't video. leave the detailing to the park place unless it's already online. Wow. So it's just one more step. It's one more step it's, and it's a quick and easy one. It's, in fact, it's... Dealers who do it right, when they get the car from the auction or trading, you go to the tunnel, you go to the car wash, you go to the photo studio. You do only the exterior pictures... So now this car is ready for sale because car with picture coming soon, forget about yeah, it. Yeah, nobody's paying attention right. to that. So during this 10 days or 7 or 10 days it takes you to get the car to the perfect condition, it's already published. You can, in the workshop, take the interior pictures. The assistant can assemble them or bring it back to the photo studio and do another production. It takes only five to seven, seven to ten minutes to finish production. Oh, wow. It's fully automated. The system knows how to update each other. There are some elements of the photo studio you still have to do by hand, the close-up pictures. Okay? But just like you've been in detail, they told you, look, you take this stuff and you clean this and you clean this. Actually, we build the training inside the app. So when you start the detail, it shows you, look, you have to stand over here, take this picture. You go to a, a magazine, a set of instruction, and those pictures now knows how to assemble themselves with the point of interest, close up. It's all done fully automatically using this AI on the cloud. Oh, that's awesome. But the main gain of this kind of process is your people. If you inspire the people if you, to be better, if you take away the mundane task of run with camera, go take some picture, go by the computer, upload it, okay? you just free them up to think, you get way much more from your people. That's what we do. That's why we know them. That's why we log in and talk to them. Because they're really not um, high-end people. Are people who just, you know, came out of college, or you empower them to make a difference on the dealer bottom line results, they go with it. They like it. Mm-hmm. That's what we do. Well, I want to I kind of shift gears for a moment and talk about you. No. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I know you, start, you, you started Sister Technologies, man, 20 years ago, 20 plus years ago, and now, now we're talking about Easy360. Right. Tell, tell me, tell me, you know how one became the other, or, or how how all that works. Well, is, sister technology had got many other companies, and sister technology today is the holding company, and the only thing that it does it's holding the patent that we invented in two thousand five, two thousand seven. So we were an online video editing company. Somebody came up and said, "Can you do something like this, like pictures with voiceover?" And I look at this, and I realize that the picture doesn't really matter. What matters is what you say on the car. You know why? Why? Ever since life left the land, the, the ocean, and moved to the land, if it walks and makes noise, it's food or I am food. That's why you can go in the airport and see some... TV, with big stuff. You don't pay attention until there is voice. Oh, yeah. So the pattern that we came in is that you assemble the voice, you assemble the message, and based on the voice, the pictures automatically get arranged. Oh, that's neat. This is the pic to vid, the picture to video. And everybody licenses it for me. and we do. But then come the, the um, crisis of the mortgage crisis and all these web companies don't want to mention their name they realize we make more money on 
the pick to vid or whatever they call it, then they make all the website. So they infringe on it, they start copy it. And I think I'm one of the few people who ever took a patent and enforced it. We actually took them to court. Yeah. And they actually all settled. And they pass a nice money. And it's every big, every website, every third party, everyone. Um, and then I had the dilemma, you know, what I do with the rest of my life. Yeah. I mean, I had a boat. I like to go. I was only, only young, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then I look at pictures and say, there's something wrong with pictures. Not just the car industry, every picture on the web. Because the way they're still doing it, somebody goes with cameras, take pictures, upload it to a server, and then from the server to go to the HTML, they move those pictures, they copy them. That's what we call data feed. I say it makes no sense. First of all, at the time, it was way before the AI, we were talking 2013, computer cannot process pictures. So why are you sending them? But there's also another issue. Every time you copy, you lose quality. It's a JPEG. You... Yeah, yeah. So I said, no, it all makes no sense. Picture has got to meet the consumer, the human, when the human wants it. So the only time the human see the consumer when in front of computer. So we can merge it on the screen. Oh, I got you. Keep it over there, and whenever you want to see it, it will come down to you. So this took a massive amount of technology because a normal SQL database cannot do that. So we started developing back in 2013 and on SQL, the same platforms that Amazon and Google and Facebook are using. We still have a huge platform. We have more than 20 million cars. We never, never ever delete it because mm -hmm. AI learned from it. Mm -hmm. So that was the second stage where we centralized everything. And then we build an app, of course, around it. Now, then come the big revolution, which that's why people still buy our technology, is when you go to a data feed, you basically send a tremendous amount of data. And the whole backbone of the internet, the whole internet infrastructure changed the last five years because of Netflix. The most of the internet now is for streaming. So there is a little bandwidth left for moving files. And that's why you shoot pictures and they must reduce it, shrink it, compress it. And then come the new cameras and everything now is 4K. So it's even bigger. Let me make it this way. If you're a dealer and you're shooting 4K mm -hmm. and you go to data feed, you give them about between 80%, you get between 20 cents between eight cents to 20 cents on a dollar. Most of the pixels are gone. Wow. Because they compress a frame, which is 4,000 by 3,000. If you go to 640 by 480, it's a joke. But even if you go to uh, HD or 19, you still, 80% of the pixels are gone. So in our technology, everything is 4K. You can zoom into a tire and read what is printing on it. Oh, wow. And that wind kinds. Wow. Because everybody is pinching. Yeah. They're not pinching the, the dollar, but they're pinching the screen. Yeah, they want, yeah you want to you see. And if you can see the stitches, in our system, you see the stitches on the seat. And after they clean the car, you... you Pinch in, and you see the leftover hair from the, from the, <laughs> from like the brush or the or the towel. Yeah. Oh wow. And you can read the mileage. You can start seeing things in the cars that are there, but you never saw them because you can magnify it to the levels that your eyes are three inches from the object. Oh wow. People just got mesmerized. 
because you leave it in 4K, and it comes zooming from Amazon, so that the other advantage, it's instant. The cycle time from shooting to publication for more car dealers is one or two days. It's one or two days it takes from the time you shoot, upload, it goes there, it goes there. Our cycle time is zero. Oh, wow. So you make a change. Let's say you want to shoot this picture again. You shoot it, it's instant. The BGR come in, it's instant update. One bad picture out, instantly all the bad picture out. Oh, wow. Because when you use your credit cards, how long it takes before you see how much money you spend on your bank? It's instant. That's why you don't write checks anymore, right? Yep. That's why people should never use data feed anymore to power the website. Because the only real estate you have is your digital real estate. You mean the, for, for a dealership or a dealer group? Yeah. Like that. I mean, there is no more you can do in real estate, but when you're a dealer group and you take all these vehicles and you put them in line and I go to your website and I click there and one car looks like this and one car looks like this and one car picture coming soon and one car is inside, one car outside, you look like Excuse me, Eastern Bazaar. But with our technology, both the photo studio and the spring smart, every car looks the same. Every car line the same. You look like a place I want to buy. Yeah. That's what we do. That's what they are professional. Does. Yeah. So that's my vision. That's the story. That's the story. That's the story. So, of course, once we got the app, the next step, Again, by mistake, we got into the photo studio business. People say, hey, but look, my picture looks bad. Can you improve it? So we look at some photo studio solution. Um, I realized right away that pushing a bush, I call it push, push a bush or push it. There's a photo studio, you push it. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's, that's not um, sustainable. So I got... I learned about photo, um, telling tables. And um, still in the USA, there are only two manufacturers that you should buy telling tables from. The problem with those telling tables, they are not geared for the automotive industry. Every car leave tire marks. And that's a terrible and impossible to clean. And whether you have a Talent table, which is um, painted or power coating yeah. or stainless steel, you cannot put chemicals on them. You put it, try to brush it off a power coating and it's rusting. Yeah. Try to do it on stainless steel and it's stained. So I decided that's it. We're building our own talent table. It's, the tops are made of fiberglass. And over the fiberglass, there is epoxy, like a garage floor epoxy, but very, very high level, and two coats of clear, so it's brush. And now we got talent tables that it's built like a vet and cleans like a boat. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's you great. You can clean it with anything you want to, and if it's getting dull, you know, fiberglass, you do what you do on the car. You just buff, buff it. it. Oh, wow. It's brand new. It's forever. And it costs less. Wow. So just like Apple, if you want to have a really good product, and deliver the dreams that your clients never dreamed yet, you got to own it wall to wall. Mm -hmm. That's how my technology push the picture to the website. We actually replace part of the website. From the time you take it, from the time you publish it, it's a zero. That's awesome. So that's the vision, that's where we are today. In fact, I have another something comes in August. That would totally change the Netscape, but I cannot tell you about it. It's not August. Well, maybe maybe in the future you can tell me about it. Yeah, I was tell you about Well, I appreciate you coming in today, Izzy. Is there anything more you'd like to share with our audience? Um, yeah, we are here because we love what we're doing. And my team is the same thing. We just love what we're doing, and we love the way car dealers sometimes challenge us. 
And it's it's amazing industry because the car dealers are hard workers and they make cut the bread and put the bacon on the table every day. So that's a good place to be. Well, thank you for coming in. Thank you. And thank you for taking the time to join us for this Out of Success Executive Spotlight. I'm your host, Brian Ankney. Today, my guest has been Izzy Alpert from Easy 360. We hope to see you again on a future episode. This one's Over the Curb and Burning Gas.